Well, hello and welcome once again to a new beginning in Christ's Gospel Hour. I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. Praise God. Wow, what a week that we've had. <laughs> we truly <laughs> have. We, uh, I'd like to say thank you uh, to all of our people that are out there listening, and we had such a great response to last week's program. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I d and I thank you for that. Praise God. There's a lot of uh, questions, a lot of statements. Uh, you know, we didn't have a single negative no. uh, response no. to the program. So praise God. And what are we talking about? We're talking about perverted Bibles, uh, false teachings uh, that have entered into the church. And many people, bless your heart, uh, because you don't truly know Scripture and search and seek it out, you have been sold a bill of goods that says that any Bible's okay. Uh, and we're, this study that we're going to be doing uh, today and weeks following is going to show you that just any Bible is not okay because mm -hmm. they pervert the truth. Uh, they remove the deity of Jesus Christ. They bring Jesus down to a nothing. Uh, and yet, they, at the same time, they elevate Satan. And you're going to find uh, that uh, many things that we accept in the NIV are completely left out uh, concerning uh, the blood, the, the blood of Jesus, the concerning word. Lucifer, uh, concerning the virgin birth of Jesus Christ, and all these things come into question. So, praise God! And uh, we're going to get right into that study. We've got to have well. Because yeah. of the because of the the, the deepness and that we need to really truly get into this, we're going to skip some of the things we normally do, like my reading that I normally do. I, I wanted to devote that time yeah. to this study right here. So. Well, once we get in through the NIV and the study here, uh, we're going to see a, afterwards many of the perverted Bibles that we're going to bring to you are basically based out of the NIV, and mm -hmm. they've just uh, if, what's happened is the devil has gotten his foot in the door, and now he's widening the door. He's, uh, and let me just say this. Somebody say, well, what about the New King James? Well, let me just be honest with you right up front. The New King James is no better than the NIV. It perverts Scripture. Now, I've said it. And we're now we're going to Now we're going to set out to prove Get it. Praise God. And so, uh, now we're going to be going very fast on this. We're going to have a little music here first, praise the Lord. And then we're going to get into this. So I'm th doing this to uh, get you a pencil and paper. And write these scriptures down, and I'm not going to tell you to go out and buy an NIV Bible. No. But listen to what it is, and we'll, we'll give you the comparison here. <laughs> Unfortunately, God. you could probably look around and find an NIV Bible close well, to Well, it's sad to say sad there's to probably say. more of them out there now than there are the true King James. But get a pencil and paper. You will need it. Amen. Praise God. We'll be right back. Praise the Lord. Uh, Me and you, you yeah, and I, you we're and singing I. today, an old, an old uh, recording. Oh, this is an old one. You'll recognize it right away as being older. <laughs> to be God here bless. Today, singing the songs that I just love, and I hope that they will bless your heart and touch your life, and I'm just thankful that I'm able to do this, and I hope that all the glory goes to Jesus. My first song is Just Like You, and I want to be more like Jesus every day.
earth around us says tear that lighthouse down the big ships don't sail this way anymore there's no use of it standing around but then my mind goes back to that stormy said study to show yourself approved uh, and I believe that means uh, not just the Bible praise God but you need to study things uh, that relate to the Bible and the truthfulness in the Bible you need to be able to understand what's going on in the world today folks the devil is not dead and he's out to get everybody he can especially Christians that's what took place in the New Testament all through the New Testament was the Jewish religious group going around trying to tell people <coughs> that you're not saved by grace, you're saved by works. And that is a lot of the perversion that we find in churches today. And they talk about the uh, works is how we get that. No, if works would get us to heaven, then Jesus died in vain. Praise God. And with that, we're going to get into this now and begin to uh, study Praise God. And let me read first of all from Jeremiah at chapter 23 and verse uh, 26, 36, I'm sorry. For the burden of the Lord shall you mention no more. For every man's word shall be his burden. For you have perverted the words of the living God, of the Lord of hosts, our God. Man, what a curse to be placed on those <coughs> who would change the meaning of Scripture for their own use. Praise God. So we're going to be reading uh, the NIV Exposed, and it's called the New International what? Perversion. Perversion. There you go. NIP, not the NIV. Right. So I want you to follow along with us, and Carolyn and I are going to be uh, reading back and forth, mm -hmm. praise God, as we go through this and trying to, to open this up for you to understand a little better. Uh, let me begin by saying this generation has a hunger for perversion. Uh, what was perversion just a few years ago is now normal. Uh, what was hiding in the closet a few years ago is now parading in our streets. Perversion has found a welcome home from, from the living room to the White House, from our churches to even the Word of God. Mm. Our friend Webster defines pervert. Our pervert is to cause to turn aside or away from what is good or true, to twist the meaning or sense of, that is, to miss interpret mm -hmm. 
a perfect definition of the new international version is to cause to turn aside or away from what is good or true and to twist the meaning or sense of. If you doubt that, before you start listening to us, uh, get your NIV, if that's what you have, and begin to compare it to the King James Version of the Bible. Now, uh, the first scripture we're going to deal with is 1 Timothy 3 and 16, where here the NIV perverts the deity of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to ask Sister Carolyn mm. uh, to go there and begin to read there. 1 Timothy 3, 16. Oh, you want me to look it up in King James? No, we'll just read okay. there from praise the Lord. Okay. And without controversy is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Praise the Lord. Listen to what it says. The clear the clearest verse in the Bible proclaiming that Jesus Christ was God. The King mm -hmm. James Bible, KGB, that is King James Bible, reads, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Amen. God was manifest in the flesh. The King James says plainly, God was manifest in the flesh. The NIV reads, he, he appeared in a body. Wow. Mm. The NIV twists God to he. He appeared in a body. So what? Well, the so what is that everyone has appeared in a body. He is a pronoun that refers to a noun or antecedent. There is no antecedent in the context. The statement does not make sense. The NIV subtility perverts 1 Timothy 3.16 into utter nonsense. Now, uh, read that paragraph on Philippians 2 and 6, Sister Carolyn. To be equal, thought it was not... Well, read the entire thing okay. if you have it printed there. Okay. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. That's what the King James reads. Okay, well, Philippians 2 and 6, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. The King James Bible, again, clearly declares the deity of Jesus Christ, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal, equal with God. The NIV reads, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God, something to be grasped. The NIV, again, subtility perverts the deity of Jesus Christ. Folks, Jesus is equal with God. He, he, he's not something to be grasped, praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus mm -hmm. is God in the body, praise mm -hmm. God. Now, these are just subtle changes. Yes, they are, very subtle. But that's all it takes, ain't it? Yes, and that's and see the thing of it is, even a garden, uh, the it's devil spoke ninety nine percent truth to her. It was subtle. But it was that little part that was a lie. That that's what tripped her up, and appealed to her pride. She wanted to be like God. Mm -hmm. She thought, well, what a wonderful thing it would be to be like God. He convinced her that. And that's see just that little. Difference. We're going to get so some, some more that are we're outstanding. We're going to get some, some more, much they more. Ain't, strong. Okay, they ain't so God. subtle. All right. <laughs> uh, the NIV perverts the virgin birth. Yes, it does. Luke 2 and 33. Okay. The, the King James Bible reads, And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Okay? Go ahead and read. continue that. The NIV reads, The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Listen, the child's father, listen to what it says. Was Joseph Jesus' father? No. Of course not. Not if you believe in the virgin birth. Not if you believe John 3.16, mm -hmm. that Jesus was the son of God. He was not 
the son of Joseph. A subtle perversion of the virgin birth. Also, read it in Luke 2 and 43. See, mm. what a sub see how subtle. Yes. Uh, wow. Well, what difference could that make? Well, Joseph was not. He could not the, be. Uh, nor could he be. Because if he was, then Jesus would have been born a man. That's and that's it. what many of the movies, the, 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 the uh, killing of Jesus are, are trying to do. They're trying to say, well, Jesus was just a man. A prophet, a teacher. Uh, yeah. and, and but he we, know, but he, we know that Jesus Christ is the Amen. Son of God. Okay. Praise God. What else does the NIV do? Now, the NIV perverts John 3.16 into a lie. We'll read again there, Sister Carolyn. John 3.16. Yes. The NIV read, reads like this. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. That doesn't sound too bad, does it? That's right. It doesn't sound bad. Right off the bat, right. but you've got to look at it. So, for God so loved the world that he gave his Son. One and only That son. whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Mm -hmm. Jesus was not the one and only son. Listen to this. Adam is called the son of God in Luke 3 and 38. There are sons of God in Job 1 and 6, and Christians are called sons of God in Philippians 2 and 15. 1 John 3 and 2 says, But Jesus was the only begotten Son. There's the difference. Woo! Praise God. By removing the critical word begotten, the NIV perverts John 3.16 into a lie. Mm. The NIV does the same thing in John 1 and 14, 1 and 18, and John Woo. 3 and 18. Wow. So, what does the by true King James Version say? Praise God. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We're Amen. all children of the Most High God. I am a son of God. Not the son of God, not the begotten son of God, mm -hmm. but an adopted son through the blood of Jesus Christ. And if you're saved, you're a son of God. Praise the Lord. See how the, the, the NIV tries to lower the mm -hmm. deity of Jesus. And say, well, he's just a son. Yeah. Well, he, no, he is the son. The Praise begotten. God. We didn't do that one. Praise the Lord. Uh, the NIV removes the blood of Jesus Christ. Wow, how important is that? <laughs> yeah, praise God. Go ahead All right. and read it. Colossians 1 and 14. The King James Version reads, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Praise the Lord. Continue The reading. NIV reads, In whom we have redemption for the forgiveness of sins. See? Yeah. What happened to through his blood? Oh, wow. Wait a minute. They took that out. Oh, my. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. Friend, the only way that you can be redeemed is through the blood. Let's, let's look at it again. Uh, the King James says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, even mm -hmm. the forgiveness of sin. Mm -hmm. But the NIV reads, In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Once again, what happened to through his blood? What happened to the truth that only redemption comes only through the blood of Jesus Christ? Nothing but the Praise blood God. of Jesus. Hebrews 9 and 22 reads, Without the shedding of blood is no remission of sin. That old song says, What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Praise God. I love those old songs. I Praise love God. it. I love it. So much of this stuff that we get into today, mm. uh, it, re it glorifies man, but takes away the glory of God. Mm. Let's talk about how the NIB perverts truth into lies. Wow. Uh, let's look at Mark 1, 2, okay. and 3. Uh, read that, Sister Carol. Mark 1, 2, and 3. <clears throat> okay. The NIV reads, 
It is written in Isaiah the prophet, I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way, a voice of one calling in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight paths for him. Well, go ahead. It is not written in Isaiah to begin with. I will send my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. It's found in Malachi 3 and 1. Hmm. The King James correctly reads, as it is written in the prophets, a better translation, easier to read, the I lie it is. And there is what happens. See, I hear so many people when I, when I talk about this and teach about this, and they said, well, you know, gee, the King James version of the Bible is just too hard to understand. Mm. Well, then to that, I have to say, uh, that's a, how the devil opens the door uh, to get to your understanding. He opens it, makes it easier for you to pervert your reading. And, and that's yes. exactly what he wants to do. Let me say this. The King James Version of the Bible, in all tests and everything that's ever been done with it, has always proven to be the easiest interpretation, translation, that could possibly come because their people understand it so much better, it's easier to understand. Now, let me also say this. Not in judging you, but this. If you have difficulty understanding the King James Version of the Bible, then you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Because if you're just sitting in church and you have no understanding, you're just taking what a preacher says for granted, then uh, you need to get right with God and you need to get filled with the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will bring understanding of this word into your life. He's truly the one that teaches you. You can hear the word of God and then you go to the Holy Spirit and say, I don't understand this. He will show you. Well, here's the thing. Let me just put it this way. Get off of the couch and get into the Bible. Amen. Praise God. You're just sitting around letting somebody pervert you. Uh, it will destroy your life. Praise God. We it's, got some more on, on <laughs> truth and yeah. lies. Praise God. Psalms 119, 160 says, Thy word is true. Mm -hmm. John 17 and 17 says, Thy word is true. Mm -hmm. Titus 1 and 2 clearly says, God that cannot lie. How could the God of Titus 1 and 2 be the God of Mark 1, 2, and 3? In the NIV, it is impossible. For Hebrews six eighteen clearly declares it was impossible for God to lie. It is impossible for the lies in the NIV to be the words of God. Whose words are they? I'll give you a hint. Jesus Christ calls him a liar and the father of it. So what are we saying? We're saying that. That's in John 8, 44. This is coming directly from the devil. Yep. These lies are coming direct, not because somebody is ignorant, not because somebody is foolish. They are being led of the devil. And we're going to get into the history of a lot of this, praise God, and I'm going to show you how two people basically from the Church of England are the ones that perverted the Bible when they tried to rewrite it in 1811, praise God. And I'm not going to bore you with that right now no. because it gets kind of deep, praise the Lord. But let's continue. Uh, read the NIV again, openly lies. Read that, Sister Carolyn. The NIV again openly lies in 2 Samuel 21, 19, where it says, Elhanan, Elhanan, Whatever. El Elhanan <laughs> son of Jari and Origen, the Bethlehemite, killed Goliath, the Gittite, who had a spear with a shaft like a weaver's rod. What eight-year-old doesn't know that David killed Goliath? Now, are you picking up on what's going on here, folks? Praise God. We know uh, who killed Goliath. Absolutely. It's David. I mean, even the smallest child in Sunday school understands it. Yet, you read the NIV, and it tells you that somebody else is credited with killing. I may try that. I might go into a church, into a little... Uh, preschool even, or for five and six-year-olds, and ask them, who killed Goliath? Praise the Lord. I bet they could tell me. You know, you say, well, what, what, I mean, these are just little mistakes. Those are little mistakes that open up your spirit, yeah. to open up your soul and your heart for perversion. Praise God. All we, right. You and read also, those and you don't even and notice them. 
<laughs> in, in Romans 1, 18 through 32, it describes the path to perversion. And verse 25 describes their decline. Who changed the truth of God into a lie? Not surprisingly, the NIV perverts Romans 1, 25 from changed the truth of God in, into a lie to exchanged the truth of God for a lie. Wow, isn't that for. amazing? One is a total change, one is a substitution. See? Mm -hmm. Praise God. This, and we're going to have to get on with this. Praise God. I Let's know. talk about the NIV and sexual perversion. Yeah. Folks, we're going to get in there. You just have no idea how much mm. it would take us months to go through this. To do it right. We'll do it the best Romans we can. 1, 26 through 32 also shows the fruits of sowing the truth of God into a lie. Verses 26 through 27 says, For this cause, verse 25, for changing the truth of God into a lie. Mm -hmm. God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust toward another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly. Now, Mm -hmm. The last few years, homosexuality and sexual perversion has exploded into the mainstream. Legislation is now pending, making same-sex marriages legal, as we found yes. throughout almost every state. Books such as Heather Has Two Mommies and Daddy's Roommate Promoting Homosexuality are in your school. Mm. But you don't find a Bible in your no. school, not a King James Bible. Mm -mm. According to the Washington Post, bisexuality and homosexuality are the end thing in our public schools. And even churches are now welcoming homosexuals and are even ordaining them into the ministry. Woo. Praise God. Read that next paragraph, Sister Carolyn. A literary critic on the NIV translation was homosexual author Dr. Virginia Mollencott an Episcopal witness, June 1991, PP, is that page? Pages. Pages, 20 through 23, she admits, my lesbianism, my lesbianism <laughs> has always been a part of me. To no surprise, sodomite is completely removed from the NIV. Oh, my, listen, in Deuteronomy oh. 23 and 17, Sodomite, that's totally removed. Any per, any notice of, of a perversion uh, as a homosexual lesbian type thing has been removed from the NIV. And these are the verses that they've been removed yeah. from. Write them down. Deuteronomy. Read those. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 23, 17. 1 Kings 14, 24. 15 and 22. 22 and 46. 2 Kings 23 and 7. Now, of okay. course... In 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, affectionate nor bruise, abusers of themselves with mankind is replaced with a non-offensive nor male prostitutes nor homosexual offenders. Notice the NIV in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 does not condemn homosexual, homosexuals or the act of homosexuality, but only homosexual offenders my so there's a difference yeah there's certainly a difference uh, when s you suddenly take out the the sodomites the uh, and well i'm not going to get into the actual no we're just sodomy. showing you the difference Praise right God. now but not only uh is he talking about being a homosexual or a lesbian but he's talking about a feminine uh, men are men and men should act like men Praise God. Mm -hmm. uh, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And, and like it says, and, and the, this is subtle, so subtle, it says, nor male prostitutes, mm. nor homosexual offenders. Notice NIV. It condemns homosexuals, uh, does, I'm sorry, does not condemn homosexuals or the act of homosexuals, but only the homosexual offenders. Now, mm. 
Mm. Listen to what it's saying. If you are offended by homosexuality, you are wrong. Wow. See how it changes? See how, have you offended a homosexual lately? Mm. Wow, come on, folks. I bet uh, we have. A little known fact, in 1988, Zondervan and the NIV was purchased by Harper and Rowe Publishers, now Harper Collins Publishers, Harper Collins, Collins published pro-homosexual books such as Making Out, The Book of Lesbians, uh, Sex and Sexuality, uh, described as beautifully illustrated with full-color photography, Making Out is the complete illustrated guide to lesbian sexuality and relationships and intricacies of love play. Well, I hope the kids ain't watching this. Mm. And many but other pro-homosexual books. That is the very publishers of the NIV. Those people uh, who here we are publishing the Bible on one hand, and over here we're publishing pornography. Hmm. Wow. Wow. You wonder why? Why the, are our children the shape they're in? Yeah, wow. Praise God. Uh, Harper Collins is a subsidiary of the global media empire, the News Corporation, owned by uh, Rupert Murdoch. The News Corporation empire includes Fox Publishing, or Fox Broad Pub Broadcasting, 20th Century Fox, and more than 128 newspapers. Fox Broadcasting produces some of the most sexually lewd shows on television. Murdoch also publishes the British newspaper The Sun, notorious for its nude pinup. Hmm. Wow, you know? See how subtle and how things have moved into our prime time on television, into our lives, praise God. Uh, how can you, on one hand, publish the Bible, on the next hand, publish pornography. You can't. Praise the Lord. You Listen. Can't. They do and not be right. It's wrong. For real proof, uh, you can check out uh, a link. Just go to Herbert Collins and, and see what it has to say about Harper that. Harper Collins. Just go to the internet if you have Harper access. Be Collins. careful. You must. Now, where is Don Wildman when we really need him? Don was quick to boycott Kmart because subsidiary Walden Books sold Playboy and Penthouse. Mm -hmm. Kmart can't hold a candle to the filth spewed by the news mm -hmm. corporation. Why isn't Don boycotting Zonderman, uh, Zonderman and the NIV? Friend, every time you purchase the NIV, you are giving to people who produce pro-homosexuality, pornographic, material, and the satanic Bible. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Where's that found? Amos 3 and 3. Not only so, they're being led astray by the NIV, but you're also supporting those people who are coming against our mm -hmm. Bible. It, it, is the devil subtle or is the devil subtle? Oh, yeah. He's had 2,000 years of practice on how to be subtle. Read what it says next to it. <coughs> Jesus plainly said. What he said is 7, 17, and 18. In Matthew 7, 17, and 18, Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, and neither can a corrupt tree Bring forth good fruit. That's Matthew 7, 17 and 18. And so do you think Jesus Christ was lying? No. When he said those things. Praise God. Listen, do you really believe that God would allow his holy word to be owned by that group? For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? Second Corinthians 6 and 14. Read that next. Do you actually believe God would allow his Holy Spirit to be published by the same ungodly people who published the Satanic Bible? Well. Isn't that amazing? They actually have, there is a Satanic Bible, and yeah. the same company is publishing it that publishes the NIV, hmm. that publishes the pornography, that publishes all these other things. Do you think for one second that God 
would smile on that? Mm. Wow. Mm. Praise the Lord. Do you actually believe God would allow his her holy word to be published by the same ungodly people who publish the satanic Bible? Mm. I have to ask that question again. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Folks, we have been born again into, we can't be, we should not be corrupted. The word is not corrupted. The word is true. And that's in 1 Peter 1, 23. Yes. Isn't it amazing, equally amazing, that the King James Bible is the only Bible that is not owned by men? Mm. Think about it. Praise mm -hmm. God. Everybody else is using all these new translations to make money. Yeah. But the King James Bible is the only Bible, once again, not owned by men. That's right. The King James Bible has no copyright ownership. Well, it its copyright is the crown copyright, which allows it to be published by anyone, anytime, without asking anybody for permission. Wow. Listen, but the word of God is not bound. Second Timothy two and nine. Let's continue right here, Sister Carolyn. Okay. With how the NIV I'm robs gonna check the time. I Jesus. ain't even been I've been so into this, <laughs> I ain't even been checking the time. Okay, praise Woo, God. Praise well, God. We're not gonna get through this. Yes. The NIV and Sister Carolyn, I want you to read here where it talks about the NIV robs Jesus Christ of worship. Uh, please read that. In Matthew 8 and 2, 9 and 18, 15, 25, 18, 26, 20 and 20, and then also in Mark 5, 6, 15, 19, worshipped him is removed from the NIV. Why does the NIV want Jesus Christ to be worshipped? Well, here's a hint. See Luke 4 and 7 and Matthew 4 and 9. So this is what we're talking about, that, that uh, Scripture has been totally removed. And remember what it talks about in Revelation, that curse is anyone who adds to or takes from the Word of God. One word. And here it is, worship him. See, the NIV uh, does not want you worshiping Jesus Christ. They mm. much prefer you to worship television or or something uh, in their NIV, but anything to take away from the deity of Jesus Christ. Mm. Praise God. Totally re removed from Scripture. Wow. Now, let's talk about, for just a moment, in how the NIV perverts Jesus Christ into Lucifer. And we're also going to see where Lucifer has been omitted uh, by the NIV. Praise God. Isn't it nice that if we don't uh, talk about the devil, maybe he'll get to the point where he doesn't even exist. Praise God. Uh, let's read there in Isaiah 14 and 14. Uh, read that, Sister Carolyn. That reveals Satan's grandest desire. I will be like the Most High. And with a little subtitle perversion, the NIV in Isaiah, in Isaiah 14, 12 grants Satan this wish. In Isaiah 14, 12, it says, The King James reads, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? The NIV perversion reads, How you have fallen from heaven, O morning star, son of the dawn. The NIV changes Lucifer to morning star. Now, folks, I thought Jesus Christ was the morning star. Doesn't Revelations 22 and 16 say, I, Jesus, have sent mine angels to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So who's the morning star? Jesus Christ or Lucifer? I think you ought to already know the answer. To Jesus. that, praise God. Isn't it amazing, though, how they took Lucifer completely it is. out? It is. Uh, praise the Lord. The NIV clearly and blatantly makes Lucifer the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm. What blasphemy? What perversion? 
And Christians claim that the NIV is a better translation. Folks, wow. don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. Praise God. Isaiah 14 and 15, the King James Bible condemns Lucifer to hell. Yes. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. The NIV does not condemn Lucifer to hell. The NIV reads, but you are brought down to the grave. Don't we all go by way of the grave? Why doesn't the NIV want Satan in hell? Now, what's happening here, folks, is the NIV is trying to do away with hell. The NIV is trying to do away the with the Satan, the devil, Lucifer. Uh, because if you think, well, if there is no devil, then there's no hell. And if we can do away with the devil in hell, then there's no condemnation for sin. You see what the NIV is trying to do? The NIV is trying to take away the grace of God. Because if you have sinned and fallen short of the truth, of of the grace of Jesus Christ, uh, hell is going to be your eternal place. When Jesus went to the cross, his blood was shed so that our sins could be covered by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. When God, again, as I say many times, when God looks at us, he sees the blood of the sacrifice. The NIV wants to take away a necessity for any sacrifice. Mm-hmm. Well, there, there's no sin, there's no hell, there's no devil. And see, if you can do away with those things, and see, that's what's being taught in many of our churches today. When is the last time you heard a sermon on sin? When was the last time you heard a sermon on hell? When was the last time that uh, you uh, heard a sermon about the devil? Well, a, a vast number of pastors and Christians use an NIV Bible. And there is no mention of Lucifer there. Praise God. Wow. What a nice life it must be that you can just go sin all you want to and not have to worry about any kind Mm -hmm. of a eternal punishment, any kind of a hell. See, that's what the NIV has done. It allows people just to go out and be nice. Just be good. Just do good works. Don't worry about hell. Don't worry about e- where am I going to spend eternity. Mm-hmm. Folks, wow, we're out of time again, but we we're going to come back again next. We're going to continue this teaching, praise the Lord, and we're going to get into uh, how the NIV tries to change Jesus into Lucifer. He really does. Uh, it tries and, to take the, the hell devil. completely out of the and, uh, teacher. It, it removes and perverts the places of hell, and we're going to... A lot of scripture, and I hope y'all are writing all this down and get an opportunity to go in and sit down and read and see exactly what it is that we're talking but about. But our main Praise show God. is to inform you so that you'll know. You know, uh, a lot of people, well, I didn't know this and I didn't know that. And that's why God puts yeah. it in our hearts to let you know. Let me say this. There's coming a day when I'll stand before God and I'll give account for everything that I ever said or anything I've ever done. And so will you. When I stand before the Lord, I'm not going to be able to stand there. And I do not want to stand there and say, Lord, I allowed the perversion to go on. I want to stand before God and let God say, you did your best to stop the perversion. Well, also, we're going to give account for what not only what we did do, but what we didn't do. That's right. Praise you know, God. We have to keep that in mind. If you know something, you're supposed to do something and you don't do it, you're going to have to give account for that also. If you know it's wrong and you do it anyway, to you, it's sin. sin. We're out of time. We love you. God bless you. remember, you shall know the truth, and and the the truth truth will will make make you free. Chance to be alone.